I am still looking for that sound bite. <laughs> I gotta find a sound bite. There we are. Much better, much better. Everybody, welcome to Problem Solver Politics. We got a huge, hugely cool show planned for today, talking about some controversial uh, topics, which are always the best topics to talk about, right? Exactly. But before we go anywhere, we have got to talk election results. Yes, we do. So that's why we brought DJ. This man is the single most connected and attractive, if you see on Facebook Live, log cabin Republican <laughs> of L.A. County you've ever seen in your life. Thank you. And uh, Mark knows more than all of us. And I'm just a guy, but a passion for politics. So we're going to talk a little bit about these um, election results because I think there were some surprises. I think there was, uh, there was a lot of what people saw coming. And there were some pr- some surprises. Before we go anywhere, though, I want to emphatically state at 7.10 p.m. today in the 29th second of the 10th minute of the 7th hour, there is no blue wave. There will be no blue wave. There may be a trickling tide that comes in, but there is no blue wave. Mark my words right now so when it doesn't happen, you can say... I said so. You know, you can have a dream. <laughs> you can also believe that North Korea and the United States are going to have peace coming out of Indonesia. I think, think that, so. DJ, I, what do you think? Tell I me think what you think. That, I think that you both need to check your premise and acknowledge what this is about. This isn't about, you know, some... See, I was having fun with tribalism. This is, is, yes, it's not a battle of tribalism. It's, this is what is happening in individuals' lives and a reflection of that. And the real question is, has Donald Trump invaded everyone's lives enough to the point where he will be their singular focus for their member of Congress or for their member of the state assembly? And as of yet, you know, the issues that I've been talking to individuals about, they haven't mentioned him. They've been talking about how expensive gas is, how expensive the price of living in our state is. They've been talking about, you know, their worries and fears about war with North Korea. They're not talking about the tax bill. They're not talking about the election of 2016 still, you know. So I think that unless if things change between now and November – you know, we need to start seeing these races for what they are as individual races in areas of our country and the issues that are affecting that area. All right. And I don't think that we should delve into this, you know, massive categorization of everybody. I find it disturbing, though, that we focus on North Korea. You know, we've taken nukes from the 60,000 range down. We're now sitting at 14,000 plus worldwide. We went from 30,000 down to 3,000. And we have a president who wants to get us back in the race and spend 1.3 trillion right away to start getting us back in that game instead of spending 1.3 trillion on infrastructure. And he also wants to take away in Medicare and in health care, he wants to take away pre-existing conditions as being something that insurance companies cannot rip us off on again. So here, hold yeah, up. I want to ask about this. I want to ask personal. about this. I want to ask about this because that's very America first of you to care about America's position with nukes. I studied nuclear nonproliferation. What is the fear with North Korea? Well, I think it's interesting. No, I, no, no. I'll so I thought this. we were talking I'll election hold results, up. but now we're talking North Korea. No, That's no. fine. We got time. Well, okay, the, okay. the meeting is coming up tomorrow, and is. the issue it's is important. not about the United States. This uh, is about our allies. It is. And we can thank Mr. Obama for canceling the missile defense program for South Korea and for Japan. And that uh, is why we are seeing this race to arms in that region of the world. So if you care about denuclearization across the world, you should be caring about Trump's policy with North Korea. Because oh, I definitely if, do. See, I was an NBC specialist. I was mm-hmm. the response man for any kind of a situation that occurred in the mm-hmm. core Central Europe for the better part of three years. Um, I was the guy that had to take a team in to try and respond and resolve many of the de- problems that we faced with in terms of nukes. My father was the actual nuclear targeting officer for all of Europe in a previous decade. Mm-hmm. So I spent a lot of time trying to get to understand this whole thing. My father was wounded multiple times in Korea and, and 
by the Chinese. And my father-in-law had the wonderful experience of not being shot when he was a Marine pilot. I've gotten to know that whole area quite well. I had troops that were on status to go mm -hmm. to Korea during mm -hmm. the previous Olympics, not the last one, but the one before that. Yes, it's very important that we try and curtail what's been done there. We know what the exact testing has been. We know that North Korea has a capability, but so does many other parts of the world. For us to sit there and say that we need to go build our nukes back up when we already have a chance to destroy this earth many times over is a big concern so of mine. So the United States, the Democrat position is that the United States should not build up their nuclear arsenal, but South Korea, Japan, and various other characters around the world should because we build up our arsenal to defend those institutions and those oh, countries wow. so that they don't have to. I so quite it's very out. America first of you to say, no. no, we should take care of them, or oh no, they should. we shouldn't be taking care of them, they should be taking care of themselves and we should just keep to ourselves. Well, people at home also, by the way, Very you have, got, hey, you have to mad. tune in. You have yeah. to tune into Facebook Live so you can just Thank see you, the yes. look on their faces right now <laughs> as these two Methodists go at each other and then have to kiss That's and make up on Sunday. That's the beauty of our faith. No. <laughs> it's very broad. It's very important. Very broad. Both Hillary Clinton and George W. Bush were Methodists. So awesome. it's, Rock on. we have a very broad faith. We get a hey, lot well, done. Mormons, we yes. took your uh, hymn book. So yes, we're all did. about it. Hey, well, well, now, now, now so please continue this. Yeah. But, but hold on a second. I, I do want to hear you guys' opinion because, yes, the summit is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yes. But I think actually what you guys are talking about right now has to do with my premise of there is no blue wave coming. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I think this or I postulate this is because as long as – the Trump bump is economically successful. That's mm. the number one thing everybody cares about. It's the number one thing that directly mm. influences mm. our lives, and everything else is literally just noise. And there's a lot of noise. The New York Times is constantly going to be posting the worst pictures of him and the worst quotes of him. All right. All the other news outlets hate him because careful. for the first I'm time. I'm going to cite the New York Times in a bit here. Uh, yeah, so sure. You careful. Can, the gray lady can be cited all <laughs> yes. day long. But all I'm trying to say is that our news media is furious with Donald Trump because it's the first time in really the past 60 years where broadcast media has not controlled the political conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It used to be if they didn't like you, you never had a chance. You were a 1% candidate because you never got airtime. If they liked you, not only were you getting positive uh, coverage, but you're also getting more airtime. And if they hated you, they would make you look so bad that George Bush, okay, actually his last two years in office, we're talking junior here, mm -hmm. was actually he had a live-only broadcast rule. He was so tired of getting improperly edited to look goofy or look stupid that he actually had a press rule that I will do interviews, but only if they are taped and broadcast live so you cannot manipulate my responses, right? So for the first time, you have a candidate who can go out and tweet to more people than we're going to watch your debates and is no longer beholden to you. So he doesn't have to kiss your ring. That's why they hate them. But uh, that's why they hate him. But all of this is just noise. Everybody is doing so much better in Hollywood. Investment is coming back in the stock market. New projects are taking off. Unemployment is the biggest indicator of this. I mean, we're seeing numbers that we have not seen since the golden gilded age of mm -hmm. the 20s. F. Scott Fitzgerald was alive when we had youth unemployment, mm -hmm. African-American unemployment, and all these other unemployment levels so low. So I think the blue wave is an echo chamber of powerful elites trying to convince themselves that this base they have grown not in tune with over the past 30 years is angry. But I got to tell you, I talk to people every single day of so many different walks of life, and they're all saying, I can't stand who he is, but I don't care. I don't care about the porn stars. I don't care about the infidelities. I am doing so much better in my business and able to feed my family so much easier. And just like Bill Clinton won because he said, it's the economy, stupid. You remember that was the famous slogan that he had in his yes, campaign headquarters, yes. that it's the economy, stupid. I think he will not only get reelected, but this blue wave, I don't know. I don't think it's coming. I don't think it's coming. So anyway, keep fighting.
Keep fighting. I, well, I, I just love this gentleman because he, he has the amazing ability to declare that he's free in favor of the First Amendment and the freedom of speech, and then he does everything in his power to shut down the press reporters, to stock it with minor people. But he's not sending the FBI like, like Obama yeah. did after Rosen. Oh, come on. You, you know, know, you're yes, still it, living up with Obama. Look, come on. I why don't you just look at the guy I that's really in the office right now? We don't all have to are spend just time delving down history. the rabbit hole. I really do. I think that trying to I, – I, I just generally don't engage in predictions as just a generalized rule because I think that it's really unhealthy. And when people vote, it's very a very complex process. Very rarely is it simplified to I hate this person. You know, I don't it's know the last like very much I hate one specific piece of legislation mm-hmm. like 2010 yep. was. That's why 2010 was such a year because you saw time and again that it was one issue that drove people to the polls, whether you liked it or hated it. Well, you're going to see guns. You're going to see health care. You could see something else that we can't even predict between you see, now and You're November. listing a lot of things, which is my yeah. point exactly. That this is going to be very – this is going to be a very complex process mm-hmm. for a lot of us citizens to go through. And what we're finding, well, at least what I saw from last Tuesday, is that it's all very localized. You know, mm-hmm. locally, yeah. the big story was that Katie Hill made it into the yes. runoff mm-hmm. against Steve Knight. That was very, very good for her and very, very surprising, mm-hmm. um, which well, a lot well, of us didn't see coming. So. Okay, so we had this argument, and Mark can attest to this. Mm-hmm. We had, and I wish you could see him right here because Cody, our board operator here, was also actively involved in this. And I had postulated that Katie Hill was going to win. Yes, I know um, you don't like you speculation, did. Did. but I, I had said I have I, – I don't know her exact stats because I'm not the Rasmussen Report or any of these polls that are calling well, people constantly. polls are fickle anyway. Yeah, the only not poll only that fickle. matters is on election day. So. Exactly. And I think also the polling methods are so outdated. None of them predicted Donald Trump was going to have the success he did. So obviously the methodologies are antiquated. But I, I just had this rumbling where it's, it's every activist I knew, the actual people that drag others to the poll, the connectors and the, and the key players. None of them were Caforio people. They were all Jess Phoenix and Katie Hill people. And amongst them all – the the vast majority were all the little local kids that were the anti SB fifty four folks. Mm-hmm. You would see mm-hmm. them at the Katie right. Hill headquarters. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't see them at the Caforio or the Phoenix headquarters. So you just I just had that rumbling gut feeling. It's like she's the one. She's the can one. I ask you a question mm-hmm. actually because you're much more you know on that side of the aisle than I am, and mm-hmm. I was anticipating that the results would be much closer. Well. Amongst who I was talking to, which is never a good – you should always try to talk to as many people as you can and understand as many right. different walks of life as you can. But amongst who I was talking to, it seemed to me to be very contentious between Jess Phoenix and Katie Hill. And I was really surprised that it wasn't closer because around town I was seeing a lot of Jess Phoenix supporters and support out there. And I was I was really surprised to find that the fight was really – or the numbers at least of how we voted was between Brian Caforio and, and Miss Hill. Like would you – would you care to elaborate on that a bit? Because that's what I thought was surprising to me, anyway, by this, by this election. Well, I think JT, what you saw, is, which is what a lot of people saw, Jess Phoenix had a fantastic guerrilla marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. Her ads were beautiful, vibrant color that were well placed. Her signs were at all the key intersections for almost everybody. She was the only street. one. She yeah. was alone, and she got her name out there. Plus, she was a very impressive candidate. Her experience in science in the atmosphere, I, I think yes. it very— Yes, wasn't it Volcanology Oh, or Volcanology, something? but yes. I, I think yes. that she helped, helped drive Steve Knight to take a realistic view and to say, yes, science change is real. And and he admitted it, and he talked about that, and I'm so pleased because he helped make that part of his conversation. Mm. Now, Brian Gaforio, I thought, was was bringing a lot of what I would call traditional Democrats, Mm. more of the party power. He also was probably the most skilled candidate coming into the race to challenge Steve Knight. But isn't isn't skill dictated by how many votes you can get? 
No, no, I'm talking about the, his ability in terms of not skilled in dragging votes, but his ability to go in with a legal mind, to have a firm understanding of how laws are created. I thought he was doing that. So that's what you saw there. Mm. Now, quite frankly, going into it, I really thought it was a toss-up between Katie Hill and Brian in terms of where the um, votes would be. I so, didn't know oh, how that's it very go. interesting. Now, I'm curious because... I heard through the rumor mill, for those of you who are following us on Facebook Live, mm -hmm. I heard through the gossip rumor mill that Miss Hill and Miss Smith um, were teaming up together to help each other out on Election Day. I didn't see that. I do think, though, that what you did see was um, our current congressman, Steve, had a slight bump because he is a true professional and he's done a, he's done a good, solid job as our representative. And so many people mm. who were looking at him said he's doing a good job. Maybe we don't always like the politics of the party or the president, but we can count on Steve. So mm. he drew a very nice, attractive following. Okay. But, on, but on the, I think on the other side, Katie Hill ran a very effective campaign. She got out the vote. She got the people charging after her. She used more literature. She put more money into it, and it worked. Well, she also okay. had a lot more help. I mean, you got HBO Vice News pumping you. And you've got and a lot Emily's of list, yeah, she, yeah. which was a very hard earned endorsement for her. Congratulations. Um, shock of all shocks. Gavin Newsom won by far the, <laughs> the race for the governorship. But but surprisingly, Mr. Cox made it into the top two runoff, which also deserves congratulations since it was a very hard campaign for him it to didn't surprise with. me that he got there though with that exactly. last mailer exactly high five yeah. to the last democrat year. okay we newsom, talked about that newsom wanted to run against cox yep he's the candidate who's not gonna win uh unless something dramatic happens and between now and november we never know what's gonna happen but he was the candidate he wanted to be up against if it was villa Rogrosa, we were in for a split fight and a lot of hard feedings between northerners and southerners mm. all right so we're gonna talk about that when we come back Got to take a little break right now. This is Problem Solver in Politics. There is no blue wave coming. The Santa Clarita Valley Food Pantry is celebrating its 30th anniversary of providing supplemental food to our neighbors in need. Help us help those less fortunate right here in the SCV with a monetary or food donation. For information on conducting a food drive or becoming a volunteer, visit scvfoodpantry.org or call the SCV Food Pantry at 255-9078. Because no child in the Santa Clarita Valley should go to bed hungry. Hey guys, this is Cardinellis, host of Problem Solver Politics. Are you the kind of person that demands to know the facts and truth behind politics instead of just hearing the same old rehearsed talking points? If so, then I got the show for you. Problem Solver Politics is an independent political talk show that interviews expert guests on real issues, both local and national. Our show holds Republican and Democrats' feet to the fire and puts problem solving before party politics. Trigger warning, this is bare knuckle boxing on air, so snowflakes need not apply. Join us Sundays at 7 p.m. Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, real estate developers, realtors, contractors, businesses, nonprofit organizations, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker is one of Santa Clarita's leaders, consistently listed as one of our most influential. When everything is on the line and you need legal counseling, Visit HackerLawGroup.com. Boots and Brews Country Music Festival is coming back to Santa Clarita, June 16th. I'm ready for this. Starring country superstar Randy Hauser. Show you how country feels. I'm dirty, oh, hey. Jared Neiman. I got this. Eric Paslin. Young forever. Lindsay L. and Tyler Red. It's awesome. Space is limited. Purchase tickets now at BootsandBrews.com. That's BootsandBrews.com. Boots and Brews is sponsored by the city of Santa Clarita. Miller Coors, The Bloody Cure, The Pleasure Pantry, and is a California Beer Festival production. The SCV Pregnancy Center has provided compassionate, personalized, and confidential care for 30 years. Angela Bennett, CEO. A positive urine test does not confirm pregnancy. It only indicates you may be pregnant. Only a doctor can diagnose and confirm pregnancy. If you used a home test and need answers immediately, the SCV Pregnancy Center will provide immediate pregnancy test results and uses the latest technology to confirm and diagnose pregnancy. The center specializes in pregnancy testing and confirmations. Make your appointment today. Visit scvpregnancycenter.org. All services free and confidential. 
Do you like to rock across Africa? Then the wait is over. Africa rocks! Africa's greatest hits is now available at the San Diego Zoo. And who could forget 99 red baboons? <laughs> Or the African-crested porcupine smash it. I got quills to pay the bills. Hey, don't get too close. And the hits keep on coming. Africa Rocks has all your favorites from six different African habitats. Hungry like a leopard. Ibex is bad. Harder, better, fossa stronger. And a new track from Kendrick Lieber. Now, Larry. Yes, Chuck? A collection of this magnitude, I'd fly to Africa. <laughs> well, don't pack your bags, friend. Africa Rocks is only available right here at the San Diego Zoo. Wow, that really does rock. No, it Africa Rocks. Welcome to Africa Rocks. Experience six different African habitats, including our first ever aquatic enclosure with African penguins. Only at the San Diego Zoo. As of 8.40 Saturday night, the South Fire was 175 acres, 30% contained. Mandatory evacuations have been lifted. For the latest information on the South Fire that broke out Saturday afternoon, just before 3 p.m., go to hometownstation.com. You can also find KHDS on Facebook and the latest information on social media. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. This is Cardinalis, your host, with Mark Murphy, the Boomer Democrat. And, and DJ Hamburger, with the one and only. DJ Hamburger, awesome. And we're also on the line with Cameron Smythe, actually, our, our city councilman. We're going to talk a little bit, uh, really quick before we get to Cameron. Um, I do have to know, this is a very passionate, passionate subject, just from SCOTUS, just from the Supreme Court of the United States of America, we got the very controvo controversial Baker case done. All right, masterpiece case, whatever you want to call it. Basically, the, um, the infamous can't make me a cake if you don't want to case. Okay. DJ, your thoughts. I'm so glad I got to start out on this. No yeah. offense. <laughs> but, um, yes, this, this was such a disappointment for everyone. For everyone – this pleased no one. Really? Because the high court, we want the high court to solve this. We really do. Well, who's the we? Everyone in okay. the United States. I mean, think about it. I, I, if I street. were baking cakes, I would not want, first of all, as a consumer, and I wanted, were to go in and get a wedding cake, I would want to be served. But having said that, if I were a baker and someone came up to me and said, I want you to make an anti-gay marriage cake or I want you to make like a Hail Hitler cake or something, I would want to say no, get lost. So this isn't a right, left, liberal, concern, gay, straight. This is much more of a cultural question of where do the lines of free speech end? Where do the lines of freedom of expression end? And this case was such a fascinating case. They tried to bring up this case with a baker in Oregon, but that epically failed because they, the commission there in Oregon that. found out that the bakers were, in fact, being discriminatory to the gay couple. And it was pretty – there was no debate in that case. But this was a much cleaner case of an individual that sincerely wanted to serve this, this – couple and unfortunately didn't feel comfortable enough to bake this cake and the ruling that came down it did not please anyone you know it's so interesting because justice kennedy is seen as this lgbt icon because he's the one that wrote the majority opinion for the Orbschfell case which i hope that all of your viewers will take time at least read the first five ten pages of it because it really details the lgbt experience in this country and he was seen as a real advocate for that community on the court, and yet he's the one who authored the 7-2 to two opinion in this masterpiece cake shop. And if you read the opinion, it's quite interesting because it's a total punt. It is a punt yeah. because well, yeah, if you look into it, no, no, if you it, look into it, it just kicked it down. It, it only, yes, it applies to that bake shop. It doesn't apply it, beyond that. No, no, it didn't even apply to the bake shop. Oh, it applied true. to the commission that was tasked okay, with investigating him. Okay, hold on a second, though. Hold on a second. Discriminating on his faith. You are saying the the exact reason why I was happy with the result. First off, 
the fact that it was individualized, I thought, great, because finally we're viewing people as individuals and cases as individuals. And I wish more of our judicial system and our political system viewed things on a case-by-case basis. So the fact that it was narrow and not sweeping, I liked. And then the second thing was, I do like that not necessarily the baker, who is an odd guy. I'm in the I don't care camp. If one of my gay buddies was getting married, I didn't think married, he was odd care. at all. I thought he was oh, a very normal man that no, bakes cakes. No, hold on a second. <laughs> no, but he was, I mean, he wouldn't even make Halloween cakes. He just has a, you very, know what I'm saying? He he was, a very conservative faith. Yeah, he was, unusual, he was so, but it's there. Yeah, he was yeah. so much, I mean, I go to church every Sunday, yeah, and I love Halloween, all right? But, so, well, let me finish, let me finish. And so I love that it was individualized, but also I like that they called out the commission because I think so many of these commissions, whether it's L.A. City Council or whether it's half these other govern- governing bodies we have, are, are full of all kinds of semi-elected or non-elected officials or there's this groupthink involved in them and they do have the potentiality of becoming, as a limited government conservative person on that aspect of my political schema – I like that the commission was called out, not the person, not the gay guys, because all of us empathize with the gay guys. We don't want to, you know, think that uh, we empathize with him. And also a lot of us, just as you said, empathize with the baker. So I like that the commission was called out because I think they messed up. Garden, no. The issue with this was that there is no precedent that is set to give guidance to the rest of us on how our culture and our society will operate. So this is this, the purpose of there was SCOTUS. no precedent that we can take from this ruling. So everyone who's trying to walk away and say, like, ooh, this is a win for our culture war, oh. it's not. All it said was that the commission made disparaging comments about this man and his faith when it was improper to do so. And well, and that was the wave and, that, that that was the wave that was against him. I mean, so, revolutions start that way. Well, yes and no, but look, this we want these cases to go to the high court so that we can solve these issues and find where is the legal boundary in these I, cases. No, I, I agree and with that. Right now, unfortunately, because of the way that it's written, it leaves us with more questions than answers than it did before. And it's calling for a lot of very scary talk amongst those who follow the court and follow constitutional law. So we- in fact, I brought it with me to cite because you mentioned the New York Times Ooh. and he's whipping out a very yes, elegantly wrapped iPhone right now. Jennifer Bolin off of the New York Times is calling for the constitution to finally be amended because of these cases. And it really highlights, you know, you're straight. You don't have your rights being debated and litigated out in court, but this community does. And that's not equal justice under law. Yeah, but things so we, do, we, we do, though. though she because... is arguing, she, and she, inside of her opinion piece on after, mas- after Masterpiece, It's Time to Change the Constitution, she highlights several cases where this line of argument of religious freedom will be abused. And namely, with um, she highlights a faith group inside of this piece. Well, yeah, that everybody knows the. Per- it's, com- it's a complete sin for people of opposite races to marry. Yeah, so right. if you have a straight interracial couple come in asking for a wedding cake, now a baker can decline them and claim religious yes, freedom. But the potentiality for abuse is always a two-way street because don't forget – And in, but, hold on a second. The LGBT community in California post Proposition 8 – multiple times has accosted and assaulted the 501c3 status of the Mormon church. And you can cite non-discrimination laws as a way to go after religious people you don't like just as easily as you could say, hey, our enshrined values of religious freedom could be used to discriminate against homosexual couples unnecessarily. That's why I think it was so important that, for example, the Mormon church signed on to the anti-discrimination and housing law in Utah. Now, we won't rehash, you know, Utah I want to get back to but... Masterpiece for a second here because yes. this brings in so many more questions about this because in the case, the lawyers argued before the high court that as a cake baker, you are in fact an artisan. And you are not expressing your belief. You are expressing your art. And you're expressing your art, th- your art through belief was their argument in court. And 
It, so they said that cake baking is a very unique profession in that. Okay. And that it should be, therefore, set aside that rules for bakers should be different than rules for hotel managers. Well, isn't, and isn't that... It's, it, it's very curious because they said it's an expressionist art. So... Okay. Well, that's what so protects all, all the filmmakers so in Hollywood, if, too. If it's if it's expressionist art, that's the precedent for this case. Then what about escape rooms? Escape rooms are expressionist art. Could an owner of an escape room then discriminate against you know LGBT individuals or interracial couples on the grounds of oh, in my religion we don't do this? Well, th and this is the, this is why I think so, it's good. So Jennifer Boylan, out of her piece, calls for the Equal Rights Amendment to be revived, but include sexual identity right. inside of it. And I am, I'm old, I'm, this is probably much more interesting for us to have this conversation because I'm very conservative and I don't like amending the Constitution. Yeah, so I have, I have long since been an advocate that the Civil Rights Act of 1964 should just be amended to include sexual identity. Because people don't realize that in the United States, it's perfectly legal to be married on Friday, but in 28 states be fired for it on Monday. You know, it's perfectly legal in 28 states to lose your housing because you're a member of the LGBT community and claim and have the landlord claim well, it's because well, here, of their religious here's identity. What we'll, here's what I think gives me hope about the fact that I know both you guys were arguing that it was punted. And before I do, oh, we're not arguing. Answer, we're agreeing on yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> agreeing. That's what I meant. I'm we're sorry. agreeing I mean, on that. Really agreeing. Yeah. There are people who are taking this as a way to put up signs that said, I will not serve gays, or I'm not surprised they aren't okay, saying, but, well, I will not say. serve blacks, because this is exactly. Exactly the kind of yes. approach no, but that hold is on. wrong. And SCOTUS is supposed to stand up, put on their big boy pants, and make decisions that affect yes. the, okay. the rest of the court. Well, first off, they're not pants, they're robes. Okay, and no, second off, I'm talking about let, let me, let, let, we're going we're to put on all of our big boy pants here in the sense that I like that our system is designed for gridlock, and I like that there was a punt aspect to this simply because I think – Sometimes, as Calvin Coolidge said, those that govern least govern best. Our society is healing this wound on its own. The most homophobic and racist aspects of our society are aging out. They're not getting the software updi updates. They're going Maybe away. here in California. Every oh, but come on. But these laws in those 28 states that I just cited were passed within the last 10 years. Okay, but DJ, speak of the past 10 years. Have we not made resounding and overwhelming progress in terms of let's just call them gay and straight relations faster oh, than yes, racial in relations in California. And all the absolutely, others. but oh, in not in Tennessee. States. There are parts of the pl of the country. Well, in Tennessee, well, they're angry because it's Tennessee. They're going to drive you <laughs> out. There's a lot of people. Even there are younger people that are still abusive to others. And many of us, many of us may say, yes, we care, and yes, they deserve their rights. But we won't look at them. We won't invite them to their weddings. We won't go to a gay wedding. Why? Well, they're missing out on great friends. Because they're suffering we're natural up. consequences. We're afraid. I'm we, in the I don't care club. We treat them unfairly. And sometimes that requires us putting a law in place that says we have to. I would agree with your sentiment, but I wouldn't say that we should be forced to. I think that the institution should be impartial. Just as institutions should not favor one faith over another, right. one branch of yes. Christianity over a different branch or any any faith, it, our institutions should be impartial, and so should our laws. Right. And unfortunately, this brings out a very big case, and it wasn't – a lot of us were really hoping that the Supreme Court would set a precedent on this so that we wouldn't – you know, have these bigger questions going of, you know, well, what if you own a hotel, right? right. And you want to claim religious liberty there to deny service for that. What if you own a hospital or whatever, you know, and these are very interesting constitutional debates where you're pitting one value versus another, which Americans have been long since our, our founding have equally valued. Okay. So hold and on. I think that we should just amend the civil rights act to include sexual identity because a lot of these questions we had with race relations in our country. Mm -hmm. And finally we overcame it with the civil rights act. And I think that we should really just amend the civil rights act to include sexual identity and, and gender. Identity. Well, here, That's give us start. your last. That's the start. Because give then we go through the process of slowly evolving and making it a reality. That took yes. many years.
dollars. It does, and I am all for that because then we don't have these issues of, but I'm a baker, but I'm a taxi cab driver. Like, right. you know, no, just treat everybody fairly. How hard is that? Like, you don't have to claim my religion forbids me from baking you a cake. Just say, like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so busy for the next three months. Go away. Like, everybody wouldn't care. Like, it's the sighting okay, of so those Okay, so 30 things. seconds. Gives you, gives you your last because I know that you do. Uh, I know you do have to go back to Pride. And also, yes. uh, we're going to have to come up on a break here. 30 seconds for, for, for your thoughts, and then I'm going to get with Cameron here on election results. Hit yes. me. If you, had to, if you had to put all this emotion into those two or three sentences, Things what would Things are it be? really looking good for us inside of the LGBT community. This weekend, Los Angeles Pride oversold, overbooked. We had so many people show up that the sheriff's department had to be called for the county, and they had to <laughs> shut down the event because the fire marshal decided that there were too many people. And they were using non-biodegradable <laughs> glitter. Yes, we tried to find biodegradable. They tried to find biodegradable lit glitter, and it doesn't exist. So. For all you capitalists yes. out there, yes. you got to make bank on biodegradable yes. glitter. Talk to DJ Hamburger. Invent it. I don't want it. They do. Go down there and sell it to them. <laughs> all right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to talk to Cameron Smythe about the election results. we got to give him a cool little segment like Killing It With Cameron or something because he's so smart. And he's so in the know, I can't wait to hear what he says. This is Problem Solver Politics. Don't go away. Looking for the best return on your investment? Do you want your hard-earned dollars stretched to do the most good for your community? That means that out of every dollar donated, a full 99 cents goes directly to the need being addressed. Help the Children is in Santa Clarita, helping Santa Clarita families and other Santa Clarita charities. When compared to more than 1.2 million charities in America, Help the Children is rated the seventh most efficient charity in the nation, operating on a 1% overhead, and we receive no government funding for our operations in the community. If you are looking to donate to the good of the Santa Clarita community, please consider partnering with Help the Children. What is donated specifically for Santa Clarita is kept in Santa Clarita and will help over 5,000 families and over 10 other agencies. Please visit our website and or call our office to make a difference in our awesome town community. 702-8852-helpthechildren.org. Every year, thousands of local children, teens, and adults receive treatment at the Child and Family Center for depression, anger, anxiety, abuse, thoughts of suicide, and drug and alcohol addictions. Our professional staff provides outpatient services at office locations, in the home, the community, and on many elementary, junior, and high school campuses throughout our valley. If you need help, contact Child and Family Center at 259-9439 or childfamilycenter.org. Improving lives, one family at a time. Step into a hot shower or slip on a warm t-shirt fresh from the dryer and you can feel the comfort natural gas gives us every day. For over 100 years, Southern California Gas Company has provided safe, reliable natural gas service. It warms our homes, powers cleaner vehicles, and cooks our food at a fraction of the cost of other energy sources with less environmental impact today and for decades to come. Natural gas, part of the clean energy solution. Learn more at SoCalGas.com. Search solution. Valencia Marketplace is your place for fun this summer. On Friday, June 15th, the Aquarium of the Pacific's Aquarium on Wheels will be on hand for lessons about sea life at noon and 2 p.m. And tours through the Aquarium on Wheels and touch me with the animals from noon till 5. KHDS will be on hand with their antique fire truck from 3 to 6. Then the fun continues with a free screening of an animated family-friendly movie in the amphitheater at 8 p.m. Check out ValenciaMarketplace.com for more details. At Jersey Mike's, we think there's a whole lot of wow to be found between two layers of fresh-baked bread. Like, wow, this sub sandwich sure has a little something-something special. And wow, juice does for sub sandwiches what spinach does for a certain well-known sailor man. Because we never just make a sub. Every sub we make is a sub above. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Your Santa Clarita Jersey Mike's. A proud sponsor of Santa Clarita High School Football. All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. If you haven't tuned into Facebook Live yet, you got to tune into Facebook Live. I think you actually have like 19 or 20 seconds of a delay, too. So you can actually log in and you haven't really missed much. On the line, we got our beloved city councilman, Cameron Smythe. And uh, also walking into the studio, we got Scott Harry's back. 
Yeah. And uh, he's going to talk. Uh, yeah, he's going to talk a little bit of infrastructure and the new. I don't know. How, is buttload okay to say? Uh, the new tub load of money that Steve Knight just got us for infrastructure that you guys were talking about. It's one project. It's a wonderful hey, project. It's but big. It just shows you how big an opportunity we have in front of us. Okay, so before we go anywhere, Cameron, what did you Yo. think? What did you think of this election? You know, there a couple takeaways. You know, I think uh, you know, on the congressional side anyways, I, uh, you know, the – there had been a lot of talk in Washington about, you know, possibly, you know, seven to ten, uh, you know, Republican seats that, you know, went for Hillary and could be in play. And uh, what was interesting is that only, at least at this point, only one of those seats uh, actually had uh, the Democrat candidates, uh, you know, getting a higher percentage than, uh, than the Republicans. And so I think uh, you saw a lot of uh, Republican incumbents, uh, you know, Tom McClintock, Steve Knight, uh, others that, uh, you know, Jeff Denham in the Central Valley that uh, performed at a, at a higher clip than I think uh, a lot of people thought. So um, I think there is, uh, I, I think some, you know, the, the DCCC is probably going to uh, kind of reevaluate their metrics going into November and some of the candidates, I think, that thought they might be seeing some money um, will not, uh, you know, may not be seeing as much as they, they had seen. And then, you know, you look at kind of the statewide races, uh, certainly a big win for, uh, you know, for, for the Republicans having, uh, you know, a, a nominee, you know, uh, Mr. Cox making it into the, uh, the top two, um, certainly a, a blow to uh, Antonio Villaraigosa, who, you know, had $23 million spent on his behalf and, you know, coming in a distant, uh, a distant third. And I think it, it, it kind of speaks to, uh, you know, when you're out of office for a long period of time, uh, it is hard to, uh, hard to get back. And then, you know, I think, uh, you know, the strength of you know, Diane Feinstein, who, uh, you know, polled, you know, 44% of the vote with 32 candidates, uh, running for the U.S. Senate, it was um, it was worse than those sixteen candidates that we had on the stage next to Donald Trump in the Republican right. primaries for president. I mean, there were two right. pages on that ballot. Right. There were yeah. two pages, and she was buried somewhere in the middle. And you know, again, you just you got to give credit where credit's due, and to be able to pull that kind of vote percentage when you've got thirty-two candidates. I mean, believe me, I. I'd love to get 42 percent in a city council race with, you know, a dozen, a dozen of us on the ballot, let alone, you know, three dozen. So, um, you know, a lot of strength, uh, a lot of strength there. But I, you know, but again, you didn't see the big turnout that, uh, you know, people had estimated. I think you're, you're looking at pretty much going to be a similar uh, turnout as uh, the 2014 midterms. Uh, and so I don't, uh, you know, it's hard pressed to see a big. Uh, a big jump. But the last thing I would just say, um, which is kind of big for the legislature and kind of inside baseball, but the fact that uh, State Senator Josh Newman, uh, who cast the deciding vote uh, on the on the gas tax, uh, was recalled and was recalled by you know, almost 60 percent, um, which is a big deal because now uh, the, the Democrats do not have the two thirds supermajority uh, in the state Senate, uh, which uh, they need to pass any type of, uh, of tax you know, uh, uh, raise or uh, rule changes. Uh, and so taking that two-thirds uh, supermajority away uh, is, a, is a big deal. And I think that, that kind of speaks to the mood of the electorate uh, going into November. Okay, so would you say the blue wave is coming? It, it, it certainly did not arrive uh, in the primary. Boom. Um, you no. Know, now, certainly, uh, more people are paying attention in in November, um, so you could uh, you, you could see a bump in in that. Uh, but even again, here in California, um, with all the money that was spent, and I think it's a good, you know, you know, and I'm sure the numbers will change a little bit. But if you look at just the congressional seat, uh, you know, here in Santa Clarita, uh, you know, between just between Katie Hill and Brian Caforio, they spent well over $2 million, and 
combined on election night, they had less votes than I got for my city council race. Um, well, I mean, you know, anybody and, would. I, you are Cameron Smythe. Come right, on. Right, that's true. But, <laughs> you know, but, again, it just speaks to the, you know, that the, the turnout just wasn't there. You know, in a congressional seat with, you know, 700-plus thousand, um, and, you know, you're, you're, you're only getting, you know, Katie ends up getting the, the nomination with, you know, it'll probably end up being around 20,000 votes. You know, you just, with that kind of money being spent, you you, know, you just weren't getting the turnout. So, um, you know, sure, there'll be a bump in November. There always is. Uh, but there could be, you know, a Republican bump, given the uh, the repeal of the gas tax is going to be on the ballot. Um, you know, there's other things that will draw people to, uh, you know, to the polls uh, come November. Yeah, so I look at this and I think, if I were an alien looking from space, just trying to analyze these two teams, because we know the Losertarian Party ain't doing anything lately. Um, if we were just you know, looking at these two teams, the red team, the blue team, going at it over their different issues and their different ideas. I, I know you hear so much about this blue wave, but I have a company that will remain nameless that does uh, give me the opportunity to probably have, I would say, anywhere between... 500 and 600 conversations every two weeks. So I probably talk to a thousand different people in a brief five to seven minute interaction. Okay. Any, any given month. And when Trump was going up against Hillary Clinton all the time, I would say, wow, this is a wild election season. What do you guys think? And in hushed whispers, people would lean over and they would say, dude, don't tell my wife or don't don't tell my neighbors. I'm not putting up a sign, but dude, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. If he can do one out of 10 things he says he's going to do, then then uh, I'm going to vote for him and we'll improve. And so I didn't think actually Donald Trump was going to win, but I remember not thinking he was going to get blown away by the amount of um, by the margin that all of the polls were suggesting and the margin all of the pundits and the hype was suggesting. So put that in this election. I mean, I spoke with Steve Knight just the week before, and he kind of said jokingly, oh, I'm a horrible fundraiser because people always said he was so vulnerable because he couldn't raise the funds. And to a certain extent, I was thinking he doesn't need to because nobody is not going to vote for him that didn't before. And anybody that was independent is feeling the Trump bump. And is not going to want to switch. So, so because of all of these conversations, once again, I thought the blue wave is not coming. And it didn't. Like, the tsunami is always preceded by an earthquake. There's always tremors in retrospect that make you look back and say, we should have seen it coming. What are the tremors that, that, that we're missing, me and Cameron? Here, actually, I'm not putting words in your mouth, Cameron. But I'm saying, no, but, what? You know, and it's funny. Is I think, you know, in all honesty, I think the the tremor really could be for you know the you know, you know the democrats in california and again you know gavin newsom is going to win all of the statewide you know candidates are it's going to go democrat across the board on the the statewide um you know just the math is what it is but if i were the dems i'd be a little bit nervous when you saw josh newman get recalled yeah uh, that, that was my feeling and you know that's and again and that's in an area that is being very heavily targeted. You know, it has overlap uh, from a media standpoint with the Rohrbacher seat. It has overlap with uh, the Ed Roy seat that is, you know, that, that is vacant. And, um, you know, you're seeing, and we have several very good, uh, Republicans have very several very good uh, female candidates in uh, Diane Harkey down in the ISA seat. I served with her in the legislature. Uh, Young Kim. Uh, you know, sir, you know, running in the uh, getting the nod, getting the nod in the uh, the Ed Roy seat. Um, you know, there are some very good uh, Republican candidates in that area. And with, uh, you know, Josh Newman getting recalled, you know, it creates a, uh, you know, and then with the gas tax soon to be on the ballot uh, as well in November, uh, you know, I think you, know, you have to do some reevaluation. And I would do the same if I were the Dems. You know, you're looking at a Tom McClintock, you know, a Steve Knight who you know, didn't spend a dime. And again, the Dems put in two and a half, you know, maybe three million by the time it's all said and done. And he still got 53 percent of the vote. Um, you know, it's you, you know, I think you need to start looking at, uh, you know, kind of at those, you know, those numbers and, and what's happening. But 
you know, obviously things can change. You know, the generic ballot is uh, is changing a little bit. It's, uh, you know, trending back uh, to, you know, the Dems are widening their lead a little bit more now uh, on the most recent generic ballot. Um, so th- those are something that you still have to uh, – You've got to watch um, in in California too how that's going to play out. Okay, so here's here's my last little statement in the 30 seconds we have before we leave at the top of the hour. Um, would you say it is fair for me to speculate? And this is sheer speculation, but I like thinking I'm good at it. So in case it happens, I can reference the soundbite later. Um, he did predict the Japanese were going to uh, attack Pearl Harbor. Yeah. I, I think I remember <laughs> no. that one. Waves, if you study them, are exponential. It's a sine curve. It's not a linear curve. And the decline of empires and the growth of economies and empires is always exponential. It's not linear, which means when they collapse, they collapse quickly. I think the stronghold that the Democrats have on California is going to collapse faster than people anticipate because people are waking up, which means no blue wave is coming. In a yes or no question, do you think that's a fair statement? No. <laughs> okay. And, well, you know, and... and- Again, I say that as someone, you know, again, it's hard to say that when in the most populous county uh, in the country of, you know, L.A., the Democrats have a 52, 17 percent advantage over Republicans. All right. And, well, we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit when we come back. Is that all right? Yep. Sounds good. All right. This is Problem Solver Politics. Don't touch that dial. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 8 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. Of the world. White House Director of Trade and Industrial Policy Peter Navarro said there's a special place in hell for any foreign leader that engages in bad faith diplomacy with President Trump. That drew this response from Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister Christia Freeland. Canada does not believe that ad hominem attacks are a particularly appropriate or useful way to conduct our relations with other countries. Trump was angered by the Canadian Prime Minister's criticism of newly imposed U.S. tariffs during a news conference following the American president's departure at the G7 summit. The 416 wildfire burning north of Durango, Colorado, has nearly doubled in size in 24 hours. It's now charred about 17,000 acres. The ballooning wildfire has led to new mandatory evacuation orders today, affecting 675 homes. The fire was about 10 percent contained. Four family members were killed in a fiery plane crash in southern Wisconsin. The plane was engulfed in flames when first responders arrived on the scene. Angels in America won the Tony Award for Best Revival of a Play, and Harry Potter and the Cursed Child won Best Play Honors at the Tony Awards. Melania Trump attended an annual gala benefiting the Washington Theater where Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. The First Lady delivered remarks at the conclusion of today's performances and congratulated this year's recipients of the Lincoln Medal. I'm Barbara Cusack. Required listening with Amazon Music. Dad music again. The greatest guitarist of all time. Wait, who? Alexa, add this song to a new playlist. Sure, what's the new playlist name? Jack's intro to classic rock. Adding Stepping Stone by Jimi Hendrix to Jack's intro to classic rock playlist. Amazon Music, the simplest way to listen to the music you and soon he will love. New customers start your 30-day free trial at AmazonMusic.com. Renews automatically, cancel anytime. Shop Lowe's to find great deals for dad on trusted power tools just in time for Father's Day. Help him knock out his to-do list with the long run time of a DeWalt 20-volt cordless drill with brushless motor, now $99. Or get him a Porter Cable 2-tool 20-volt max lithium-ion combo kit with a drill and impact driver, also now $99. All projects have a starting point. Start with Lowe's. Offers valid through 620 while supplies last. See store for details. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with a best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. 
That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call right now. Operators are standing by. 1-800-452-1075. 800-452-1075. 800-452-1075. That's 1-800-452-1075. Men, are you feeling tired, stressed, or just don't have the energy you used to? Did you know this could be related to decreased testosterone levels? Luckily, there's a safe, effective solution. Weeder Prime helps support healthy testosterone levels with clinically tested key ingredients. Just two capsules of Weeder Prime each day can help change your mood, energy, focus, body fat, and lean muscle. Feel the way you felt 10, 20, even 30 years ago. Rediscover your prime with Weeder Prime. To find a retailer near you, visit WeederPrime.com. That's W-E-I-D-E-R Prime.com. One more day. One more day. Cage Test is proud to present Diamond Rio, four-time country group of the year, 23 top 10 hits. Experience Grammy Award winners Diamond Rio like you've never seen them before here in our hometown at the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center. Country legends Diamond Rio and featuring country showdown winner Savannah Burroughs. Savannah Burroughs and Diamond Rio together at the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center, Saturday, June 30th. What a beautiful mess, what a beautiful mess I'm in. Tickets are going fast. Visit CanyonsPAC.com to purchase yours. CanyonsPAC.com for Diamond Rio. And the bad news is you're gone. Real stories from the Aquarium of the Pacific. I first came to the aquarium in 1998 on a kindergarten field trip. The aquarium inspired me to learn more about the oceans and how to best protect the environment. I just never got that connection. I just thought, oh, look, this is just water I can play in. But the aquarium was so much more than that. Someone throws the buoy and they tell Parker to go find it. He brings it back to me, and as he comes out of the water, on the buoy it says, will you marry me? I remember one of my students being surprised by her father, who was a diver in the tank. Our son Liam fell in love with the Aquarium of the Pacific. It's a great way to spend more time with my dad. When I was six years old and I saw that amazing big blue whale, my life was forever changed. I remember some kids touching the bat rays and going, wow. Come celebrate the Aquarium of the Pacific's 20th anniversary. Meet some old friends and create aquarium stories of your own. Call 888-SHARKS2 or visit AquariumOfPacific.org. The Aquarium of the Pacific. All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. This is Card Nellis, and we're with... Okay, Mark Murphy, the yeah. Boomer Democrat, <laughs> representing that other moderate, compassionate side of this television show. We're also in the studio with Scott Harries, and still on the phone with Councilman Cameron Smythe, who <laughs> shot down before we left my speculative, uh, my speculative sentence that there is not a blue wave coming. And uh, finish your thought process there before we had to go to break. Well, I, again, you know, I don't necessarily think, no, I don't necessarily think there's going to be the blue wave that everyone was predicting. But uh, I was more shooting down your your thoughts that, uh, you know, Republican statewide candidates are going to, uh, you know, benefit, you know, to that, you know, at a, great, at a greater level. And, you know, or that California was going to see a, uh, a, a, a change. And, you know, the math just, you know, just doesn't work. Uh, and, you know, the reality is, a lot of those folks that could help make that change occur are leaving California, um, yeah. you know, whether they're, you know, they're you know, moving uh, with their families or you know, they're retiring and can't afford to, you know, to live in California. Uh, and that's what I really worry about and, and, you know, watched when I was in the legislature is, you know, the, the continual assault on, uh, you know, the, you know you, the, the middle class for lack of a better term, that it's, it's very difficult to, as everyone, you know, we all can relate to, to live in California on a teacher salary, on a, uh, you know, on a, a pension, uh, you know, on, on a military salary. You know, it's just, it's becoming more and more difficult. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you're seeing that gap, uh, you know, that gap widen. Uh, but, you know, but we cert I certainly agree that the policies are really starting to, 
uh, have a negative impact on California as a whole. I just don't know if there's going to be enough people, you know, still in California who would want to make the change that can make the change as opposed to just, uh, you know, just move it out and, uh, you know, leaving for another state. I love every time that I talk to you, I am not only humbled, but B, it's, it's hilarious. I think if my father loves sports and he always wins his fantasy basketball and fantasy football brackets. And it just amazes me how he'll just sit down and talk with his friends or turn on ESPN sports. And I think half these ESPN anchors are just BSing how much they know and all the numbers they remember and the names and the positions and the, the years so-and-so won the championship. But nope, there's my dad talking it, winning it. The proof is in the pudding. I feel that way, that amazement, when I talk with Cameron Smythe because he'll just lay down who's won what, what demographic shifts have happened, which representatives from which, demog- uh, from which districts have won and where the future is going and the way those ESPN anchors blow my mind. So I just, I just think we need to start our own fantasy politics website, and I'm just going to start betting on what Cameron says. So um, in, in the line of that thought, if, if you don't think my sentence that a possible turn, not a revolution, but a turn could be happening, that we both seem to agree that the blue wave's not happening, I think that if enough people wake up, it could actually take a slightly more conservative uh, turn. I mean, we're not going to turn into Texas here. But um, if, if, if not, what do you think will happen? Like, what do Thank you God. feel? <laughs> what do you feel will happen, Cameron, well, over these well, next 10 first, years? First, remember, you know, I think in November we still might have a chance to vote to make three states. And we still can break away. See? Do you think uh, is, is, is that that's got to be dead on arrival, though? I mean, conservatives so, have a know, problem with that. No, uh, no, I know. I'm just yeah. I'm season but yeah but I, if you want to start the revolution that'd be awesome i mean i yeah. right there for you <laughs> we'll call it new california cameron Smythe governor no. <laughs> right i see that's you know those those are a district i could possibly win at that point you know um but i you know i worry uh, that you're just going to lose um you know, the the pockets of communities like santa clarita and you know other areas throughout the state you know you're just you're just not going to uh, – people are just not going to stay. And you're going to have areas you know, like a mini Santa Barbara where, or a, a big Santa Barbara where you really don't have a middle class. You have you know, the folks that can you know, live up on the hill there above the, you know, or on the beach and then the people that, you know, that work, on the, work in the fields. Um, yeah. And you just don't have you know, that, uh, that base uh, anymore. Um, and – you know, California is just one, uh, you know, again, one bad day on Wall Street from uh, from really going, you know, going under because we uh, I, you know, we rely so heavily on you know, personal income tax uh, for revenue that uh, when you see that go away, um, you know, it's a real problem. And I always I always use the example of uh, the the Williams sisters and, and Tiger Woods, um, you know, they were all California kids. And, yeah. you know, it, at one time, you know, you, the three of them together were, you know, probably pushing, a, you know, close to a billion dollar, you know, brands. And, you know, they all moved to Florida. You know, they weren't going to stay here. And, you know, that's, you know, the challenge that, uh, that you're going to get well, um, the, as you the, see the big challenge being able you, to relocate. The big challenge you have right now, and this is Scott, uh, is that, you know, you have the high, those high-end pockets of, of wealth, and that's the, the, the world that I – deal in is with with clients but you have the you know the middle upper middle class and then you have the high wage earner uh who now is really uh you know carrying the is going to carry the burden on that personal income tax you can't deduct this the state tax so you're you're looking at you know on a combined basis of you know property and sales and uh, taxes of of getting in the 60 percent range and people in that arena are already, you know, uh, headed to, to Nevada and they're headed to Texas and to Florida and those places. And when, that, know, and when that breaks down, then, you know, then you do have uh, a state that's like Santa Barbara and that doesn't work. That just no, implodes. It, it, you, make, you make a great point about, you know, the tax deduction. And that's the one area where, you know, the tax cut did hurt Californians. 
um, we, we know, where you're without being able to, you know, to deduct the state income tax. In other you know, words, we're, that, we're with, with, uh, with, uh, that uh, tax yeah. cut, which was put together fast with a lot of errors in it, was rammed through, which benefited the very wealthy 1% to 10% and ignored the rest of the 90%. We're seeing the ramifications of that. Isn't that well, amazing? Well, I would actually argue with you. I, I actually believe that. Wait, well, helps, hold on a second. You know, Before we go down the rabbit trail yeah, of the taxes, yeah, which we, we will should. talk about, I know Cameron's got to go here and get back to his family. I would say that um, in my heart of hearts, though, I definitely agree with you in this sense, Cameron, that when I talk to people, oftentimes it's interesting. All my liberal friends think I'm really conservative. All my conservative friends think I'm a super, uh, you know, lefty liberal. But I do no. tell them the biggest <laughs> no, thing, so. yeah, the biggest thing I worry about in California and also in some other states, sometimes like Texas and some of the very conservative ones, is single party rule. And you see the detrimental effects mm -hmm. of single party rule right. in no better city Oh, no, sorry, state, state than Michigan. In Detroit in 1964, every single type of engineer and every single type of company existed within a 20-mile radius of downtown Detroit. They had nuclear going on. They had aviation going on. They had every type of manufacturing, chemical, automotive, everything going on. But through the detrimental effects of single-party rule and not having anything other than Democratic statewide cam uh, candidates for 40 years – that state has gone to a point where it is the first state in American history that has actually had bills suggested where they level homes to create farmland. So many people have left that they are proposing bills where municipalities will level blighted districts so, in so, order to create farmland. So because of your age and you don't understand what happened you, you understand what That's happened so then. ageist but, but you know, no no <laughs> but what we're seeing is that i've lived here for 35 years and you're seeing the exact same thing right here you've had all the manufacturing leave the state we talked about this a few weeks ago right aviation left here uh all types of manufacturing uh jobs have left here because of uh the uh, South Coast Air Quality Management District. So you're going to have exactly the same thing happen here. It's just that it's it's going to take just a little bit longer because we have the pockets of wealth in the state. Okay, so what do we do, Cameron? Last thing before you go, what do we do? You what know, action do, do we take? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny you bring that up. You know, I, I always made the analogy that you know when my our parents were growing up, you know, whether you had a PhD or a GED, there was a job for you in the aerospace industry. You know, that's, yes. that's gone. gone. Uh, my generation, you know, same thing. Uh, there would always be a job for you, you know, in the studios. Uh, that is really going away as, you know, as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I remember oh, 2014. We're, we're bringing all these uh, productions back to California. We're talking about the growth of Disney here in Santa Clarita. We're talking about SpaceX and all the new. No, in this pocket. In, in this yeah. pocket. Yeah. This was farmland before. Now we're moving a tremendous amount of growth in new technologies, the future, not the old contaminating yeah. technologies but, that but, we but, experienced. But SpaceX is here and others are here because they have. Uh, they have tax benefits for being right. here. So at some our, point, but, all but, of our but when they have was no, based on yeah, that. but when they have to when they have to play in the EPA uh, world that others have to play in, then those things will go away, and it won't, they can't afford it. They'll go but elsewhere. But they're they're coming here. They're building, and it's the same thing. Have defense was purely government dollars coming into this, building the economy up, and a lot of it was good. Other parts was contaminated, and the other was. Why do we want to spend all of our money on defense when we could be doing some other good projects? Okay, so here's my, here's my last question for you, Cameron, is I love how we just talked about, for example, Hollywood. And people don't realize this, but I remember in his sixth year, uh, this is not his fault, but I think um, similar ideologies that exist in the L.A. City Council, um, it happened to be the first year in 2014 when – over 51% of Hollywood pilots were actually filmed outside of Hollywood because the California Tax Commission had actually chased all of that business away, even though Hollywood is synonymous with California. And th it was frustrating me that, that the elected officials, for some reason, didn't understand that production can go anywhere. Nowhere is there mm -hmm. a mandate that it must be done here. And if it is exponentially less expensive elsewhere, they're just going to leave. So, so Cameron, what can be done 
to keep us from going the way of Michigan? I mean, what can yeah. our listeners do to keep us from turning into Detroiters, a la right. 1980, having rappers, you Bone know, make Republican. albums about the eighth mile <laughs> in Santa right. Clarita? You know, what what can be done about McBean Parkway? Yeah, you know, and exactly. uh, you know, it's uh, you know, on the on the film stuff. You know, I actually uh, co-authored the very first you know film tax credit bill. Um, you know, to try to bring those those jobs back, and it's um, you know it's a challenge to try to show you know the you know the legislature and others um, you know, the benefits of these jobs, and I think that's just really important about you know who you elect and uh, you know who's willing to run for office, um, because when we did this ta- film tax credit bill, you know you we had to battle some of the the Democrats because they didn't want tax credits you know, big corporate tax credits. And then I had to fight in the Republican caucus because they didn't want it to be giveaways to Hollywood or it was going to help the adult industry. And so there's a lot of misinformation about, you know, what the value of these jobs. Like, don't we want to help the adult industry? Really Maybe uh, Trump would pay a little bit more attention to us. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a, probably a new cabinet position <laughs> so, for that. So uh, you know. Stormy Daniels is filling it. All right. Cameron Smythe, right, you are a scholar and a gentleman. Thank you so much for helping us out on the show today. Uh, This is Problem Solver Politics. Don't touch that dial. Your hometown station. KHTS wants to help you save money. Go to shopkhts.com for half-price certificates to your favorite restaurants and businesses located right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Huge savings on your favorite places. You can also buy them right here at the KHTS studio during business hours. Start saving now. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Drugs or alcohol abuse can tear a family apart. In Santa Clarita, just like everywhere else, it's an epidemic. The Way Out Recovery is here to help. Call them now at 296-4444 or visit them on the web at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. The Way Out offers outpatient treatment for adolescents, adults, and family members. The Way Out is compassionate, caring, professional, and confidential. You and your family don't have to suffer any longer. Call The Way Out Recovery now, 296-4444, or visit thewayoutrecoveryscv.com and make an appointment. Asking for help is the first step. Valencia Marketplace is your place for fun this summer. On Friday, June 15th, the Aquarium of the Pacific's Aquarium on Wheels will be on hand for lessons about sea life at noon and 2 p.m. And tours through the Aquarium on Wheels and Touch Me with the Animals from noon till 5. KHDS will be on hand with their antique fire truck from 3 to 6. Then the fun continues with a free screening of an animated family-friendly movie in the amphitheater at 8 p.m. Check out ValenciaMarketplace.com for more details. Hey, Kyle, what are you doing Saturday, June 30th? Not sure. Nowhere bound, huh? What? Come on, Bubba Hyde, get it together. I, um... You're a beautiful mess. Oh, uh, I see what you're doing. Diamond Rio songs. Uh, you're unbelievable. <laughs> Why, thank you, Kyle. I just want to let our listeners know that we'll be hosting the Big Diamond Rio show with special guest Savannah Burroughs at the Pack at COC. Imagine that. <laughs> Look at you getting it now. One more day. No, dude, dude, it's uh, it's June 30th. Be my wingman. Oh, now you're quoting Savannah Burroughs songs. Yep. Sweet. Join Tori and me when we host Diamond Rio with special guest SCV's own Savannah Burroughs. Saturday, June 30th, 7 p.m. at COC's Pack. Tickets are on sale now. Go to canyonspack.com. Or hometownstation.com. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. Cameron Smite 2024. Okay, so, you know, some people on the <laughs> conservative side are dreaming, but you know what I got to say? Cameron's done a fine job on the city council. It's been a pleasure to periodically vote for him. Yeah, you know, and it did it did it did it hurt when you when you checked the little box with an R next to it? Did it hurt? Did your fingers burn? At times I didn't even know he was an R. You know, he just uh, he takes <laughs> care of the people. <laughs> Actually what's funny is um the uh I, I, I voted for Jess Phoenix. 
Well, see, I voted there, for Jesse there's Phoenix. Balance in, there's balance in the universe. Now, I might have done it just to split the Democrat vote to make it easier for Steve Knight. Right. But, you know, hey, I got to say. <laughs> but those are the games we play, right? Why? But actually, yeah. I really liked her. I, I was so impressed with her, and I mm-hmm. liked her, that I wanted to encourage more people like that to run. She needs okay. to stay in the game. This is a yeah. bright individual who can make something happen There's for this no country. way I am facilitating single-party rule when the real election comes along, the general. Yeah. So uh, Steve Knight's going to obviously be the only option there. But um, <laughs> well, we already know what the great success of the Republicans dominating the House, the Senate, and that some called White House. Um, if they could just get their act together, it'd be wonderful to see what they could accomplish. Well, that's why we got Scott Harry's here to talk all about all about our Republican who totally got his yeah. act together, Steve Knight. Yes, he did. Who apparently is bringing home the bacon. And just scored a what was it? It was like forty million on 47 top. Forty-seven million, million, million yeah. of a yeah, forty-seven million of a special grant that will basically uh, expand the HOV lanes, the truck lanes uh, here in the uh, Santa Clarita Valley. You know, so kind of from you know Newhall Pass, you know, through the I five corridor. All the way up to Castaic, we're going to yeah. get about 13 plus miles of H O A H O B. Your favorite uh, topic, yeah. expansion. Right. I know you don't like that. Well, the that. science denying uh, Democrats. Yeah. But are, uh, but I did want to mention though that there's an additional truck lanes that truck have been lanes. added. That's that's key. Yeah, this there's almost eight Dude. miles of truck lanes. Well, because the wow. truck lanes are scientifically proven to work in right. both yeah. alleviating traffic yeah. and also creating more efficient transportation. Yeah. I, I I'm not convinced the H O V lanes really do what Neither they're supposed science. to do. And I don't think science proves it out. You know, uh, I've I've taken advantage of it because I drove a you know a Honda Civic natural gas car for for six years, and then you know I moved over to a Tesla. But you know, so you know, for someone who lives here, you, you know, you can get to the west side in 45 minutes and home in 45 minutes, and kind of know that's what it's going to be. But you know, that doesn't necessarily help everybody else who's jammed up in those other four right. lanes, yeah. right? So, and so it's a little bit selfish, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do in this state sometimes. Okay, so the reason I invited Scott back was because we had I, – I wish you could tune in. We should Facebook Live <laughs> the hour-long conversation and the heated debate with explicatives that cannot be used on the radio <laughs> that inevitably happens after we get done talking politics – over the airwaves, and it was about three it, weeks ago, I except think. Except we had so much common ground on the infrastructure. Oh, no, it was great. It so was much great. common ground. Oh, so, so three weeks ago, I wish you could have seen it. Scott and Mark were just going to town fanboying about Ms. Chow. Oh, and, and how phenomenal Mitch McConnell's daughter is as the, I believe, no, no, the title. No, no, not, wife. not wife. Wife. Sorry, wife. wife. I'm sorry. Right. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. I got corrected there real quick. <laughs> oh, so yeah. um, as the secretary of transportation. And then sure enough, within 13 days, mm-hmm. it's out that Steve Knight has brought home the bacon from her. So give us give us the whole spiel on the infrastructure, man. Well, I think Steve Knight, uh, Congressman Knight, was very concerned because he'd been working so hard to try and get response out of the Trump administration. He said by his own admission, he'd been calling, he was trying to get her out here. Because one of the problems was they, they set some standards up, and, I, and he called it shovel-ready. When you put a project and say, you've got to be able to, we'll only go out when it's ready to roll. Um, you forget that a lot of these projects can take six months to several years to be made into uh, ready to go. A reality, yeah. yeah a reality. And, 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 you know, let's go back on that because that was something that came out of the Obama administration, mm-hmm. right, to, you know, a- after the uh, the 2008 financial crisis. And they were talking about these shovel-ready programs and we're going to put – and and, they, and the federal government actually did put money into those things, right? right. It's just that they weren't shovel-ready, and and they were fighting their own bureaucracy because to get a bridge built in this country, you know, is something like 10 to 15 years of studies and and EPA studies, environmental studies, all those things. The before Empire you get State it. Building was built in 88 days. Yeah. And yet the union <laughs> negotiation requirements are 90 right. just in, in the state of California. Right. We could never build the Empire State so, Building again. Like so we did so then. I think that what's got to happen and, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about what we talked about. Uh, what Mark and I and you talked about it a few weeks ago, and you know, I know that we could throw a lot of uh, fodder at uh, the Trump administration because you know some of these things haven't happened, and that seems to be the game of the day with any media 
group and you know and with the Democrats. The point I is, mean, it within reasonable there, voters. Well, and and, and 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 maybe rightly so in some respects. It's just that we we are fighting a bureaucracy that exists in our country to get things done. Mm-hmm. That um, unless we have the help of uh, you know either the you know the cabinet level people, if if there's any way that they can you know you know, push things along or, or to actually, you know, use these majorities to pass laws uh, that allow you to move forward and to fund these things. Because, I mean, d- let's just take it for what, l- let's just take, bring it back here local. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is the, the I-5 corridor mean to Southern California? Yeah, oh, it's a lifeline. It's, what's it's a lifeline. Yeah. I mean, w- with, without it, I mean, it's like, you know, it's the, it's the widow maker. Right? I mean, you don't have it. You drop dead. And what are we going to do when they build the 126 city? Or we we have even the small Vista Canyon just being added. Right. Or what's going to happen on top of the grapevine? Traffic now, because of just what we've done in North Valencia. I I remember as a kid, when I moved here, the I-5 was a ghost town Mm -hmm. until you hit. Not even the 405 split. It was like until you hit the 170. Well, try and the now, Cross Valley connector flooding into mm-hmm. the 14. Oh. It dumps so much traffic there, it shut it down. So let's go. So let's go back to 1990. Uh, let's see, three, right or four, when we right. had the the earthquake. earthquake Jeez, right? You guys okay. are old. Yeah, it is old. <laughs> but let's. I left that morning to go to work at uh, you know at four and change in the morning. Did you hear that? The and Republican left very, very early in the very morning early, to work. Right? It was a holiday. <laughs> what was I going to do? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and I was actually on the 14 freeway when the earthquake hit. Uh, and I'm actually, you know, uh, by proof, I was the last guy across the 14 expanse before it fell down. Wow. And, uh, and then I worked my way back home, and it was a, an unbelievable experience to, to come back up the five and see the 14 uh, overpass lane across the five. But when that happened, it, it took, uh, I was at that point was going to, uh, was traveling down to uh, downtown LA, and it took us upwards of seven hours yeah. to get to work. And the traffic was so slow, they had porta potties all along the way, because I mean, you actually had, you know, it, it was just terrible. So what did they have to do? They had to get that, that artery fixed. They didn't go to, they didn't go to, uh, uh, to our, you know, to uh, the California transportation, right? Caltrans, Caltrans yeah. right? We didn't go there. They went out to public bid, and they did it in such a way that that by building it as quickly as they could, up to the standard, up to the new earthquake standards. On top of that, uh, they got it back in service in a record time. That the company who did it was, which is San Bernardino Company. They took uh, took in something like a fifty to seventy five million dollar bonus for having come in that fast, right? Well, why? Why were we willing to pay that kind of money? Well, because it's the lifeline. It's the lifeline. Yeah, right. And so it is today. And we're crisis and, responders. We won't right. pay for a gas tax, but we will pay seventy <laughs> right. million dollars for a bonus to fix it. This so, is why I have you on. Right. This but is, you know, but the point. The, we're, the, we're not the, logical. Yeah. But the point is this. Our infrastructure across this country needs to needs the attention uh, to maintain the economic power that we are in the world. If we right. don't, then we are going to fall behind China, and uh, and they will exploit all of their you know their their influence around the world to to push us as far back as we can. So there has to be dollars spent on infrastructure. I mean, you know, for those who drive. You, you know what it's like to try and drive across this country. For those of you who fly, you know the states you want to fly into and the, and the cities you don't want to. I mean, I don't want to fly into LAX so I don't have to. Mm-hmm. I'll fly into Minneapolis all day long. It's a beautiful airport. You go to Las Vegas, it's a beautiful airport. You get in and out. You know, you don't want to go to J- JFK. So, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, forget it. Yeah, San you Francisco, put, you put forget it. Five or ten million people kind of compresses yeah. and makes that airport a little more crowded right. than Vegas. Yeah, uh, no, but, no. But, but you I'm can't what, land in Vegas now year round now that they've got some things fixed. So, right. Yeah. Well, so th- the point is, we need to do this across the country right. in order to to, uh, to 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 stimulate the economy to have you know the the, the infrastructure needed to grow and to to be the mighty power that we are okay so like what infrastructure well i, I want to point that out you know we we tend to think about the thing that we spend all of our time in the car and the roads we forget and the airports where we mm-hmm. were flying to and from we forget 
what about this electrical that powers every single thing that we do? Right. Our power grid is not only uh, the most discombobulated, messed up, weak problem with a lot of old technology. More importantly, it's a security risk at this Huge point. Huge security risk. There is so much vulnerability we there. We have an EMP and we're done. Yeah, we we yeah. go back oh, to done. the dark. Yeah. Well, I dark actually ages. wrote. We don't survive. I wrote yeah. a script based upon yeah. a, um, a a domestic terrorist who actually wreaked havoc on the city first through fires, and then the sequel was through the electrical grid. Well, right. we die. Because we drive by yeah. it, though. Yeah. You drive by we it, literally. Right. don't get food. What's keeping somebody from just throwing something over the fence when, yeah. you know, I mean, they're just right. like on the side of our streets. I mean, a bank you can't get within 50 feet of, you know, yeah. without walking through uh, right. some kind of six-inch bulletproof glass. But our electrical grid, well, if you got a pair of bolt cutters, you can just yeah. walk inside, right. you See, know? And, 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 and oh. those are the issues, but the main issues are is that the technology is so old and the replacement yep. of that technology. Let's just say we did have some kind of EMP blast in, in, a, in an area, not just the whole country, just let's say Southern California. The, the, the time it takes to build those transformers, the time it takes to do all that to replace those things, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, most of the population would die. Yep. Uh, out of lack of food and water, and mm -hmm. it would just fall into total chaos. And so, you know, slowly the uh, the energy companies are working on this, and they're replacing these transformers, and they're doing things that are uh, th that you know are shielded against these types of blasts, right? But we but don't have at, at we don't have anything in the pipeline. No. We don't have any backup. Right. Um, if these transformers do go out. We're, we do not have anything to yeah, replace the grid, it. Yeah, the grid, the grid well, goes down. Well, also, what's interesting is all the sociological studies show that when people are very – I'm a very proud Californian. I loved growing up in California. I love mm -hmm. our culture. We're very forward-looking. We're the I don't care surfs up club. Right. I really feel we're preserved from a lot of these social hatreds that some of the other Nor'easterners or some of the other Southerners deal with because out here we're just – we're just kind of a little more happy-go-lucky Californian, okay? Right. Um, and, and, and when you do the sociological studies, one of the number one things that all people, regardless of state, um, but especially in California, are proud of – are public works projects. Whenever they pull populations, mm -hmm. what makes somebody yeah. say, I'm a proud Texan or I'm a proud this, there's culture, there's religion, there's common bonds between social activities, there's all this stuff. But in all of the populations in all of the states, one of the top three items is always our public works. And California, we have a whole lot of cool stuff going on. I mean, right. you look at the Orange Crush, you look at our freeway system, you feel like you are driving through Blade Runner, all right? And I mean, it is kind of hip mm -hmm. and right. it is kind of cool that we spit out off of this amazing public work projects or public works project into the ocean. You well, know, just right. so I want to see more of this, but it seems like it's slowed, and I don't know if it's bureaucracy. It, it or really is the bureaucracy. I, 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 the other, the other thing I, I look at is you know, um, if if you look at all the people that have you know in the very beginning when Trump took power, uh, I mean we still don't have judges and people. You know, to run organizations in the, in our in our federal government approved, and, and it's because of the obstructionist effort. Oh, that's whoa, going whoa, 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 whoa! I, I want to so point many out. Ways. It is. In a lot Dude, of they the are key, sitting in, in his I office. Say, in a lot of key places, in a lot of key positions, he worked very diligently to try and find a way to streamline down to the two-year concept, and and it was started in the Obama administration to try and get there. He put a lot of things in place that could do that, but he didn't put people into those positions some of them it's very easy to get approval of them others he has not even submitted candidates for these driving committees and teams that will push this through yeah, that but, but think about why we're not going they're, they're, but not, they're gonna, not doing but it but they're not voting they're, they voted now not to go to to the august break right and that's basically because uh um uh not a, uh, what's <laughs> i forget senator um uh, is it McCain? No, McC McConnell, right? McConnell, there we oh, go. Yes. So he's he's basically said, you know, look, we're going to stay here and we're going to try and vote and push these done. things through, right? Uh, but it, but at every turn, even even for Trump, you know, and this goes against uh, not necessarily against the Republican but he, Party, Trump but Trump is getting more blowback. No, he, he is he getting is more, more obstruction. So than Obama from his own did. party. I mean, oh, look, at, look at look oh, at no, 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 wait, yeah. wait, 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 his own party more L blowback listen. than Obama. How dare no, you? No, 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 when uh, Mitch McConnell said you we're not going to do anything to what, for the next you, eight years, you listen, you listen right Obama, now. And they did that. They did not look want at to what look at what McCain, John McCain, has done more to damage 
the the Trump presidency in every kind of area, whether it's economic, taxes, and even to even right now, as he is is uh, Trump is getting ready to to meet with North Korea to try and bring peace and all these things. Uh, you have Trump, you have McCain, you know, criticizing him for the way he handled the G7 up in Canada. He because he botched it. No, he didn't botch it. He's using the idea of tariffs and all those things not as a concept or a way that we're going to live our lives. It's about using a tool to, you know, it's a sledgehammer or whatever you have to do to, to hammer on the heads of the people that have been taking advantage of this country over and over and over and over for, for many, many years. And I'm not saying it's the Democrats' fault. I'm saying it's... The government's I, I, fault. I agree. There's okay, a Democrat, lot of Republican, yeah. all the way through. No, the, but hold the, on. There, there, but we there have is free some, markets, but, yeah, but there's not bring free a to us around make, the world. Make no, it the no, Russians hold again. Hold on a second. No, I'm going ba- to back up my comment here. Right now, our society is suffering because a lot of these authority positions aren't fulfilled because they require – uh, ratification, shall we say, from these different bodies? Okay, you're, no, and he's not getting cooperative. No, he's he not getting any cooperation. The guy well, doesn't no. know anybody. He doesn't know how to reach I out to. I just got posted. Dave Goss just posted people. me a list of 45 that he knew of, very important positions um, that Republicans nationwide are trying to yeah, get fulfilled. Yeah, you don't have the head of the FAA so, or an acting position. The yeah, head of the well, National hold on a second. Highway Safety so, System. So yeah, Obama is an got flack. Position. Obama got hold on. He, Obama got flack by the opposition party because that's yes. the opposition party's job. But the difference right. is the and opposition now party we can't do. The hold no, on, no, let no, me no, finish. No, hold we on. approved uh, everybody. No, but hold, yeah, let me finish. Oh, everybody. He, a, oh, compared to what is going on today. But it's because if Trump I, doesn't even get no, people up there. No, no, hold on, no, no, hold no, no, on. Many times. Hold on. He's not making it there, happen. There, no, Mitch McConnell very famously said that we're our job as Republicans is to try and stop everything Obama is doing, and everybody tries to beat him over the head as a racist because and he all that did other it. stuff. Well, hold on a second. Oh. So he was playing the role of the opposition party. All he was saying was in much more well-measured words, not my president. But now Democrats feel much more morally justified in being absolutely obstructionist. I mean, they're doing sit-ins so that Steve Knight can't even show up to work. That's not just protest. Oh, whining that here. Is, Come no, on. No, we're this isn't whining. This is saying, I'm backing up my comment. When they're protesting about a gun legislation, that's a different okay, thing. No, okay. Don't argue, please. Well, no, that's I'm backing up my comment. Thing. That right. I think Donald Trump has gotten more resistance than Barack Obama so, did. And the proof is yeah, that the Democrats has. will not come to the table. And I'm, I'm referencing specifically Schumer. the appointment of all these different, um, of all these different uh, positions of uh, uh, authority and cabinet positions and he so on and so forth. He gets turned down once okay, and he so, won't so submit no, anybody no, back. No, come let's, on. Let's, he doesn't let's, even try. Let's, 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 let's just take a step back on a couple of issues that I think that, that has happened. And – Look, at, I, 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 I work in the world where I deal with a lot of very wealthy, influential people throughout this country. Names. Okay. I want names. No, I can't, <laughs> I can't give you a name. But the point is that, that when I talk to these people, and these people know Trump, and they know a lot of these different pe- these players, right? And, and a lot of these guys are Democrats, too. And yeah. they say to me, you know, it's kind of funny to watch you know, CNN or to watch this and watch that because – what they're saying about this guy is not anything what he's like when you're in his presence, when you on a one on one meeting where the, the ability he has to walk into a, into a room and read the people and and to get people talking and to find the compromise. Because if you really think about it, he wasn't really a Republican. He wasn't really a Democrat. He was a okay. business guy who was trying to bring Republicans and Democrats together to to benefit his company or his his projects right to to make money and to 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 work and create jobs in this country so but it's not about trump he wants to make this whole thing he, I, I, we ought to make trump dams trump roads trump hotels everything's about trump no it isn't he needs to get his name out of this and let the various parties pull this together. He needs to have a real administration where he has counselors that are in office, where he doesn't fire and have the highest turnover of any cabinet that's occurred. Let's get but, some but, but sanity But that firing here. and that turnover, to me, to a certain extent, 
is demonstrative Three of chief of good. staffs in a year? But, well, Come hold on. on a second. Hold on a second. If you're starting a company and your chief of staff can't actually handle it, it's time to find the next one that can. And if he can't handle this, find the next one that can. One of my biggest frustrations is that Obama never fired anybody. Oh, let's get – okay. He no, never we're fired anybody. About the current no, president. Let, let me, let let's me, focus let me, on the let president. Me make a, let me make an observation. Okay. okay. I've never worked in government. Never. Okay, I've always worked in the in the private sector, and when things need to get done, they you know you you know the people you need to go to within an organization to make things happen and to get it done. And I've worked in organizations that you know in the late '80s, early '90s that were private enterprises. You know they weren't public; they didn't answer to shareholders. They had partners, and you could get you could get things done immediately, yeah. right, with the right thing. Now, then, then you move to a big, large, you know, uh, bureaucratic public company, and you needed what I used to call, quote, the jungle guide to be able to figure out who to go to this guy and this guy and that guy to get to this to that. And to get the same thing done that I used to get done with a phone call now took me three or four weeks of maneuvering, right? Now, now, now take that and put that in the government, and it's just it's, – it's astronomical. I don't, even, I don't even know how a guy like Trump who – you know, thought he could come to Washington and use his business skills and his, you know, negotiating skills or his personal skills and all those things that he believed would be mm-hmm. a benefit to him with, in that. N- with no government. He didn't no, even have city council. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he got, I, I really believe that he got blindsided and that, and that learning curve, if you want to call it the first year or the first 500 days, has been huge. For him, well, or, 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 or as you might want to say, well, now hold on, huge, but it's, yeah. it's, huge. But it's, but it's one of those but things. But I just wish just... he would learn instead of keep firing. Okay. No, his I think he is learning. I think he is. Now, learning. before we go on happening. break, before, before we go on break here, I'm going to read one thing from Politifact really fast. On March 14th, Donald Trump did he do a press conference? No, he tweeted. Always. But this is what he tweeted. <laughs> Hundreds of good people, including very important ambassadors and judges. That was actually more Arnold Schwarzenegger than was Trump, right. so I'm not going to continue <laughs> with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, are being blocked and are now slow walked by the Democrats in the right. Senate. And he goes on to use explicatives. Anyway, this is from PolitiFact. Quote, we ran the numbers, and Trump is certainly right on one account. Important government posts are empty, but allocating blame is more compl- comp- uh, complicated than Trump suggests. Democrats bear some responsibility, yes, and I'm sure Chuck Schumer's out there taking credit for all of it, right. but so do Senate Republicans in the Trump White House. As Mark Murphy says, this is problem-solver politics, though, so we're getting to the bottom of this. Right. By the numbers... Compared with recent presidents, and this is why I'm backing up my comment, Trump has had the fewest nominees confirmed to date, according to the White House. And he's also had the smallest percent of nomina- n- nominees confirmed by the Senate at this point in his presidency. Than so, any president. Than any president. So Deservedly. Reason, no, but it can't be deserving. Well, but look at some of if, the people he's put up. They're Republicans. They don't know their job. They can't even figure like, out what it, they've never been in a but you school could, you before. Could, you could say the same thing about Obama and Solyndra and all the people with no experience that he was appointing. I mean, Van Jones was appointed to this entrepreneurial position oh. over alternative – energy sources and he's not any scientist it's like no i love when dave Chappelle made fun of the fact that everybody asked um who did the uh, la vida loca ricky uh, martin mm, right. like ricky martin was asked about the war in iraq more than like politicians were in prime time the when, when it started happening because he was the popular singer then and and, and ricky martin is not a social scientist <laughs> exactly. all right so so i'm looking at this so and the my, celebrity apprentice is and, not and probably the guy to tell fr- us who to put into position yeah this is my biggest frustration is you're that, fired yeah is that <laughs> the senate democrats are not cooperating in basic good governments it's one right. thing to be an uh, opposition party but in basic good governments no cooperation they are the new party the of case. no right. the new not party the of case. no don't touch that dial this is problem solver politics every year thousands of local children teens and adults receive treatment at the child and family center for depression anger anxiety abuse thoughts of suicide and drug and alcohol addictions our professional staff provides outpatient services at office locations in the home the community and on many elementary junior and high school campuses throughout our valley if you need help Contact Child and Family Center at 259-9439 or childfamilycenter.org. Improving lives, one family at a time. 
your hometown station. KHTS wants to help you save money. Go to shopkhts.com for half price certificates to your favorite restaurants and businesses located right here in the Santa Cruz Valley. Huge savings on your favorite places. You can also buy them right here at the KHTS studio during business hours. Start saving now. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. One more day. One more day. KHTS is proud to present Diamond Rio, four-time country group of the year. 23 top 10 hits. Experience Grammy Award winners Diamond Rio like you've never seen them before. Here in our hometown at the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center. Country legends Diamond Rio and featuring country showdown winner Savannah Burroughs. Savannah Burroughs and Diamond Rio, together at the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center, Saturday, June 30th. What a beautiful mess, what a beautiful mess I'm in. Tickets are going fast. Visit CanyonsPAC.com to purchase yours. CanyonsPAC.com for Diamond Rio. And the bad news is you're gone. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Problem Solver Politics with Cardinellas, Mark Murphy, and Scott Harris. Hey, now, before we get going, okay. I just got to say something really quick. And okay. I've been thinking about this for a few days, and it, and it doesn't have anything to do with what we're – well, it has a lot to do with what we're talking about. With your but milky it, smooth but, voice, you're going to record it, our intro. No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me tell you what I want to talk about. I just want to I want to just say and I know that uh, this will never get to their family but uh, I want to say to the Charles Krauthammer family. Oh yes. Uh how 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 you know broken hearted I feel for them in uh in the illness and the the and the pending loss of uh, Charles Krauthammer. The speed uh, of cancer, the speed yeah, of cancer is horrific. It's, it's just horrific. But yeah. the thing that I want to say it's is that we're talking about problem solver politics mm -hmm. that was the guy who was a problem solver here's a guy who is so smart that he he breaks his neck in his first year of medical school he finishes in four years mm -hmm. yeah. along with all the rehab and all those yeah. things right so but but he was he was a, uh, a a true voice of reason in in this cloud of of uh, you know of political fervor and ideology that exists in this country and I, I just want to tell his family i want to reach out to people and tell you know people what a great man he is you, you need to go out and read his books i've read almost all of them he's a great thinker you may not agree with it all but you cannot uh i don't believe uh, many times uh, uh, disagree with the analysis that he did because he was so smart so well, one of the things that I, it didn't pretty come out in the earlier session is we're talking about how it's being staffed but both the Republicans and the Democrats have tended to say that building our infrastructure is important. It's this. It's like their job. Y yes. It's, I mean, it, it is, is their, their job. job. Their job. It, and they can't get it done. Federal no. government, number one job, defending us in our military. military. Yeah. State governments in our interaction with this behemoth federal government we have now. Job number two, getting public works projects done. And we right. just don't. And I'm so reminded of Eisenhower because of the journey that he took in the 1920s of the first convoy that went across the country to try and explore and map how the roads were and how bad they were right. and what were they going to do in wartime. He took that information and he used it to build one of the greatest highway systems that any country in the world has ever Wait, had. Wait, Eisenhower, and, and, he was a Democrat. Wait, no. No, no, he, he was wasn't. He was a he Republican. Was, and he, he and was oh, a Republican. did you just <laughs> what? Your friends are listening. And guess Your what? Friends are, you voted the for Republicans him. You're not that old. Voted, <laughs> the Republicans voted against born, him on yeah. that bill and, but, and the, the Democrats voted for for him, and, right. and he got a few extra turncoats on the Republican side to join right. him, and he was accused. Believe me, uh, oh. he was accused of being everything bad as much as a communist right. because he built our highway system, right. and, and it required but, but highway also, tax. But the, the Eisenhower highway system also had a massive national security infrastructure built into it because, if you notice, oh yes, if yeah. you notice that every eight miles, there's a one mile stretch of straight highway and that was so that the bombers 
could land. that were carrying nuclear payloads would have <laughs> a place to yeah. land. It's true. So, I mean, well, yeah. let me let me tell you, that's every, why I think every the time I'm the... flying back from Las Vegas at night in my single engine yeah. bonanza, <laughs> I follow that highway system because, you know, yeah. there's an old adage, that, you know, if you're flying at night and you have an engine out and you don't like what you see, you know what they tell you, turn the light out, you know. So you don't want to have that happen. But if you're flying right over that nice freeway, you got somewhere to land, yeah. brother. You got somewhere to land. <laughs> somewhere I, to I have a friend who did that, and it, it saved his life journeying yeah. through that great way. So I love the highway system. system. Well, but it's not, you know, we were talking about earlier about the electrical grid, which scares us all. But right. drinking water, we saw what happened in Flint, Michigan. But look at California. Yeah. We, we're arguing about how we're going to get water here. What are we going to do if we don't put some money into right. clean water? No, I, I agree. I mean, if you look at the way that we get water uh, just through our, our aqueduct system, right? If you go all the way back to Mulholland, who built that, and the, I, mean, I mean, think about what we're talking about. We're talking about technologies that were, you know, are, are almost 100 years old, well, and 70 to 80 years, 100 years and old. And this is a big yeah. dark secret. And we're still secret. using it. And this, yeah. you guys touched upon a very big dark secret that I'm surprised they haven't made a movie out of. I think Chinatown 2 needs to be made out of this. Yes. And... A big problem that I don't think they would ever admit publicly, but I've had multiple civil engineers um, that I've talked to tell me uh, in private conversation is that Mulholland was such a genius and had such carte blanche power over yes. the DWP of what, what is now the DWP yeah, yeah. that oftentimes many of his projects, he just drew up and told people what to do and the math was in his head. Right. So the L.A. doesn't actually know where all of its water mains are. Like, because all of the maps that he drew were, like, on napkins in his house right. and, and or were in his drawer. And so when he died, so much information just went with him. And there were people that have recorded in their diary saying, I was standing next to Mulholland, and he said, oh, we need to bring water down to this new, new community. Oh, that's fine, because I have a T-joist that goes, like, 300 <laughs> yards down this mountain, buried 10 feet underneath that tree that right. we can tap into. And nobody else. But him and his mind, and with a bird's eye view from all those maps, knew. So we don't. We, don't, we have to wait for water mains to break so they start We're, flooding streets before we even know where they exactly. are. Oh, that's Mole. And think about those in Philadelphia that depended upon Benjamin Franklin for the same thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In Boston and New York, Boston. we have a disaster that we have to address. And, no, we do. and then you've got your rails. You're talking about your ports. What are we going to do there? You look at all of those. And then, of course, there are some of the levees. I mean, think of what's yeah. happened. In, in New Orleans and along the Mississippi River. So, so let me ask you this question, if we, you know, because this is the, always the competing value. Mm -hmm. You know, it's do we put the money into the infrastructure? We have the military, which, you know, w with the threats of today, there's, there's got to be the right balance of money that goes into that military. Uh, and then on top of that, it's the social programs. And those social programs... You know, and I know some people look at them as, you know, wealth transfer programs and they don't like this and they don't like that. But there's got to be a point where we as a, a, as a country and as a people go back to the idea that we have to take care of ourselves. We have self-accountability. Our families need to take care of our families. Our, we got to take care of our kids. Our kids got to take care of us. Because if we want the government to do it all the time, then we can't have the infrastructure to be the superpower and we'll just be, the, you know, that great idea that lasted 250 years, uh, maybe 200, you know, 300 years, however long before it folds. So what do and you And that's suggest? what I'm afraid of. So what's the well, policy prescription? Look, this is just like what happened in Rome. I mean, you had to make a choice. Um, you either had to find a way to spend the money to build your infrastructure, or you've got to put so much into the military, you're going to put so much into the other. You have to make a balance. So, so, so maybe the public works programs, a lot of these things, if you're, if, if you're on welfare and those things, and, and you're an able-bodied working person, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe it's the, you know, you, you don't have to go into the military. But maybe kids, when they graduate high school, they got to spend two years working yeah. on public works pro and learning, you know, real life skills, engineering right. skills, or whatever there it might be. There is an amazing book, and I am hoping to interview the author. Okay, I can't remember his name. I will look this up before we leave. But it's the case against education, and oh, one yeah. of the this one, is, one know, of I know where you're headed. Yes, with this I know where you're going with it. Well, just think about immigrants. I look at the fact if we took our immigrants and put them into a, a civilian conservation corps mm -hmm. where they're taught over 
two to three years. I'm glad language. you said language. Civilian Conservation Corps. <laughs> what else? Don't mess <laughs> not, up not that not word. <laughs> CCCP. <laughs> okay, but uh, right. here's the key. We put them in a place so they have an opportunity where they're doing projects, they're earning money, they're being taught how to uh, – all these various skills of working in community, and we wind up with something that gives them a path to citizenship. Right. You spend five to ten years in this program. Yeah. And you're learning working, English. Well, the way you're learning English, things, right. you're learning skill sets, and right. we have a win-win. The, the way it the Romans did That is a win. It, and it, that's – I, I totally agree with you, and uh, I think somebody with your military experience can completely uh, testify to that. Because um, Romans, you couldn't be a citizen unless you had military experience, and right. all of them volunteered, you know? including right. their guys who were in their fifties and sixties. Yeah, right. that is amazing to me. Right. And so, yeah, I looked it up. It's the case against education: why education system is a waste of time and money by Brian Kaplan. That's the name I was looking right. for. And his sentence that reflected what you said. Um, in an interview I watched was amazing. He said, supposedly we send children to college in order to get good at a job and in debt them a hundred grand. Yes. Right. <laughs> if we want them to be good at a job, instead of giving them a college, why don't we just give them a job? Yes. Right. Well, you know, I, I look back at when I came out of, when I was growing up in Reno, Nevada, I started work at the age of 12 you know, doing paper routes and stuff. But in those summers, I was given jobs where I was digging ditches. I learned how to run a ditch witch. I learned how to put sprinkling systems together. I learned how to, you know, work forklifts. I learned how to, you know, double wide forklifts, drive trucks, do all of these things that, you know, hey, if, you know, if, if my education wasn't needed anymore, you know, I know I could go do some of these other things. And those things uh, help a great deal. But you can't do that in today's society. You can't even go get a job until you're 16 or 17. It's All right. Crazy. Okay, so unfortunately, we're going to we're gonna have to press the pause button. We're going to have to come back next week to talk about Thank all these societal him. norms that have gone away. <laughs> You've been pleasured to hear Scott Harris, Mark Murphy, and Carney Thank Ellis you very much. on Problem Solver Politics. Come back next Sunday, 7 p.m. KHTS.